So here's a question we had on projectile motion, okay? The question here says, a tennis ball is thrown from ground level with velocity V0 directed 30.0 degrees above the horizontal. If it takes the ball 0 0.50 seconds to reach the top of its trajectory, what is the magnitude of the initial velocity? And we have our options here. Now, in our previous lesson, we solved this question and we got our answer as 9.80 meter per second. And I said I was going to show you a different approach or a second method to solving this question. And that's what we'll be doing in this video. All right. First things first, let's take down our solution. So first things first, solution. So solution to this question. Let's see. Solution there. Again, looking at this, you can see that they said from ground level, we want to first of all get our ground level. So I'll just come here. I'll put my ground level here. If you want to, you could just do this just to show its ground level. You could add this part here just to show it is ground level. So you have this. Right. And we had that a tennis ball was projected. I'll pick this point as my point here and I'll project this upwards going up like this. From here goes this way and then it comes down here. So you have this. All right. And of course, let me just extend this ground level. All right. Okay. So we have this. So I will just extend this ground level to this point here. All right. So I have this. Now they said the ball was projected at an angle of 30.0 degrees. So I'll come here just to illustrate that. I'll come here. I'll do this. All right. So I'll do this. Okay. This angle here. That's 30.0 or 30 degrees. They projected at an with a velocity of V naught, that's initial velocity. Now let's look at an alternative method of solving this question. Let's get our apex or the top. Let's call the top here. We'll call this point B, that's the top. Call this point A, starting point, and then point C, your end point. Now they said it takes the ball about 0.5 seconds from the question to get to point B. So let's say at point B, we'll say at point B that the time T is equal to 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, uh, what else can you pick from here? We want to know that V0, initial velocity, initial velocity, that V0, it's equal to unknown, so it's unknown. Again, let's see what else do we have. Theta, so we can just say theta, angle theta here. Theta, it's equal to 30 degrees. All right, so having got these values, how do we solve this question? Now, there's a second approach to this. You want to note something about free fall, right? For, you want to know something about projectile motion, and that is that at the top of a projectile, or, uh, okay, let's say this, at the top, of the trajectory of a projectile motion. So here's a very important um, statement I think you should take down. Of a projectile motion, something important happens here. And that is that the vertical component, the vertical component, of velocity it's equal to zero it's equal to zero all right so something very important to note that at the top of the trajectory that's at b the vertical component of velocity is zero now we want to note that in a class on on projectile motion we said at each point on a projectile let's say this point here and this point here before b each point has a vertical like this, as well as a horizontal component of velocity. So this is Vy and this is Vx. Also at this point, you have Vy and at this point you have Vx, that's horizontal. At B, you have a Vx value going this way, 
right? At B, you have Vx going here, this Vx. Then Vy, let's say going upwards or perhaps downwards due to at B, this will be going downwards because gravity is now pulling this down. It's no longer going upwards. It now starts coming downward. You have that Vy is equal to zero. Of course, it stops going upwards. It starts coming downwards. And that's why the particle ends, ends at the ground because it starts, the, the vertical motion begins to stop. That's from this point. It begins to stop, right? It stops here and then it starts going downward, right? So the idea here is that simply the vertical component or velocity is equal to zero. Now with this concept here, I'm going to get an equation that we can use to solve this question. And what's the equation? Recall that from our equations of motion, we have an equation such as V is equal to U plus AT. This is one of the fundamental equations of motion that V V means final velocity, it's equal to U. U means initial velocity plus A, A is acceleration, and T, that's time. At B, let's take with B, at B, and considering, at B, and considering the vertical component, the vertical, component of velocity would have that V. Now we're using just vertical components. Now the reason why we are choosing to use vertical component is that we know that at B, that's top of trajectory, the vertical component of velocity is zero. So let's compare all of this. Let's use this in terms of vertical component. So V becomes Vy, the same thing, but this time Vy is equal to u u is initial velocity and don't forget that we said initial velocity should be taken as v naught in essence i could write u here as being v naught v is equal to v naught that's u plus 80. now we want to take don't forget that we're taking the word there vertical component for a velocity v naught the vertical component of v naught will be given by v naught sine of theta we explained this concept in our previous class that when a vector as you can see here is inclined at an angle to the horizontal like this. The horizontal component that's this way is V naught cos theta, while the vertical component is what there? V naught sine theta. So you want to note that. So that means V, or V naught in this case, becomes V naught sine theta. So why am I using V naught sine theta? Because I'm considering vertical components. V naught sine theta. Again, so you have plus. So I'm having this as plus. Again, you have A. Now, at this point here, you can see that this body has a vertical motion. That means gravity is pulling this body down. At this point of trajectory here, the acceleration of this body becomes the acceleration due to gravity. So that means what I'll have here, instead of A, I'll use the value of gravity, which is 9.8 meter per second squared. All right? 9.8. But before this body here starts going down, it was going upwards, which was against gravity. So this becomes a negative 9.8. So I'm using this. So that's A. And then finally T. At B, we said T is equal to what there? 0 0.5. So we have this and then T as 0 0.5. Next fixing value, we'll have that Vy is equal to V0 sine of theta theta there is 30 degrees that's the angle then you have plus and minus that's minus this to multiply that's 9.8 times 0 0.5 i'll just put them together proceeding but we said something we said at b and considering vertical component of velocity we want to note that for a projectile motion as we said earlier that the vertical component of velocity is equal to what there zero now, what this means is that the Vy at this point, Vy is simply the final velocity. Don't forget that the initial velocity was the V0, in which the initial velocity had a vertical component, which is V0y. 
And the initial velocity had a horizontal com component, which is V naught X, but we did not use V naught X. We only used the vertical component of initial velocity, which we got or we said is V naught sine theta. This is for initial velocity. What about final velocity? Also, the final velocity here, now at B, which is this point here, you want to know that at B, the vertical component of the velocity, which at this case here, is your final velocity. Since we are stopping at B here, we'll take A as the point of initial velocity and B as the final stop or final velocity. So at this final velocity here, which is at B, we said the vertical component of its velocity is equal to zero. That means Vy will be zero at B. So at B, we know that Vy is zero. So at B, we have that Vy, vertical component of velocity, which in this case will be the final velocity, is equal to zero. So we have that zero, it's equal to V naught sine of 30. Let's see what we have. Sine 30 is simply 0 0.5. That gives you 0 0.5 minus 9.8 times 0 0.5 gives you about 4.9. So 4.9. Now, all we have to do is just move 4.9 over here. We'll have that negative 4.9 because positive 4.9. 4.9 is equal to, I'm left with V naught times 0 0.5. From here, to get the value of V naught, all you have to do is divide here and divide here by 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 divided here by 0 0.5. So from here, you can see that this cancels this. So V naught will be equal to 4.9 divided by 0 0.5. Let's do this division. If I do 4.9 divided by 0 0.5, what do we have? I have 4.9 divided by 0 0.5, and that's about 9.8. So if you look at this, we see have the same 9.8. The same answer as we had in our previous example or previous method 9.8 so that proves that it is correct so my answer still remains the same thing as this 9.8 so basically this is how we solve this question all right all right guys so again as usual if you enjoyed this video do want to like this video all right hit the like button give this video a thumbs up also leave a comment for your comment, there's a question eight here. The question eight here says an arrow is shot horizontally from a height of 4.90 meters above the ground. The initial speed of the arrow is 45.0 meters per second. Neglecting friction, how long will it take the arrow to hit the ground? You have your options here. See how you can solve this question. Leave your answer in the comment section and I will tell you if you're correct or not. Also, if you enjoyed this video, tell us you enjoyed the video in the comment section. If you have any question about this video, leave your question in the comment section and I will give you a reply. Don't forget to also subscribe. If it's your first time here or you're yet to subscribe, please do well to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon and select all so that you get notified whenever we upload new content. Finally, share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class.